More? More. How can there possibly be more? You still haven't watered not, the zucchini. I'm not watering it, and it keeps spitting out these squash. Welcome to the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. It is the week of squashes here on the show because we can't stop producing it somehow in our vegetable patch. So I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you where to put them. <laughs> Watch. What do you do with a darn zucchini? That's the question everyone's asking. Uh, here, here's uh, these got out of control. These are a little big, but uh, let me share with you this. <clears throat> You see that? That came off of one plant the size of a small Buick. All right, so for some reason, the deer hate me, and they came and ate all my tomato plants, so I gave up on my garden. There's two pumpkin plants and one zucchini plant that is kicking out more fruit, vegetables, than I have seen ever in my life. And as opposed to impressing uh, and imposing on my neighbors to eat these. I've decided that I am going to dedicate the entire week to how do you get rid of the darn zucchini. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, different recipes I've looked up and I've seen. And I say, well, I, I'm going to try that. Okay, so uh, what we have is um, we have uh, oregano, we have thyme, we have basil. I'm going to put a little more basil in. And what we're going to do is basically we're going to coat the zucchini, put it in the oven at 350 degrees, and uh, see what happens, shall we? All right, so first of all, um, I'm going to mix this stuff up. Um, smaller zucchini obviously are better, but I think all of us have cooked a zucchini that's over two feet long and boated it out. <laughs> we'll be doing that later this week. All right, so ingredients basically mixed. All right, so all we want to do with this is trim the ends off. Let's cut this one in half as well, shall we? Let's do that. And then let's cut this down the center, and then let's cut it again in a quarter. Okay. Ah, that noise tells me my oven is up to temperature at 350 degrees. All right, so this is going to be a bigger one, but... So, there are our zooks, and what I decided to do is they said drizzle uh, olive oil, uh, but I think these are going to need to be coated a little better than that. So what we're going to do is we're going to coat it in olive oil, and then we're going to put that and put it on a tray. Now I'm gonna do a bunch of these really quick. So I'm gonna do this right here, okay. So uh, Parmesan cheese, main part of this. This is in there, I don't think I mentioned that, did I? Uh, Parmesan cheese, uh, so everything is there to disguise the flavor of the zucchini. So pressing it down, getting it covered. Okay, so I'll give you that idea, and so that's what you're going to end up with. Now we're going to put them at 350 and then we're going to take them out uh, after about 12 minutes when they're tender and we're going to put them under the broiler for about two to three minutes to make them crispy and then we're going to find out can we get rid of the darn zucchini. How do you get rid of the darn zucchini, especially if your wife doesn't like zucchini? Well, this is my latest experiment. Um, came out of the oven. 350 for about what 12 minutes they're a little bigger than they should be um, and then roasted them under the broiler for a couple minutes and now we're gonna find out if we can get rid of the zucchini if your kids would like it if your adult friends will like it invite everybody over for a zucchini party tell them not to bring their own it'll work mm-hmm that'll work that, my friends, a plate full of that, a platter full of that, a bucket full of, a wheelbarrow full of that at a dinner, that will get rid of zucchini. Got more recipes coming up this week. Please, lock your cars so people don't put zucchinis in them. It's just a matter of safety. All right, we'll talk to you later.
The Todd and Aaron Daily Stream is brought to you by PC Laptops with desktops and laptops starting as low as $7.99 with a lifetime parts and service warranty. They fix phones too. Go to PCLaptops.com. What is going on in Vegas? Have you seen the pictures of the grasshopper invasion? I talked to a friend of mine and it's, it's, she says it's disgusting. She said they can't let their kids out to play because literally everywhere you go you're stepping it's because you can hear the crunch every time you walk. Oh. They're everywhere. They're coating the sidewalks. They're on all of the lawns. She says nobody can, everyone tried to cover up their swimming pools because they all ended up drowning in the swimming pools. Oh, and, no lifeguards. Oh. You need those little tiny rings like Oreos to throw in. A lot of the hotels have turned off their lights at night. That, now, this is the weird thing. I didn't it realize the grasshoppers them. were so nocturnal. Oh, my gosh. It attracts them. The light is like a moth to a, to a mm. porch light. Mm-hmm. And it's just... Just imagine that, and they have, and I they don't like, like, like wasps. They they grab on and they walk like that. It's disgusting. So does anyone know why it yes. turned into the psycho invasion? Oh, okay. <laughs> Entomologists one time a year they get to say something. They're so excited. Besides our Arca- uh, cicadas. Cicadas. That's the other time that the uh, entomologist become very important uh, to people. And that, why is that bug sounding like a construction site outside my bedroom window? Right, right, yeah, right, yeah. right. Um, is uh, that they're migrating and they, they're moving on. The ones that are there yesterday uh, were not there the day before. And then there's this total thing until they all pass through. There's fresh, new, horrifying rounds of grass. And they just decided to, to do it and they kind of, I don't know, got off track just a little bit and went through Vegas. I don't know that I've ever heard of any of the casinos dimming their lights before. Well, it kept them I mean, from, not ever. Because they had to shovel them. Out from in front of the front doors, and it's just gross. Well, the meteorologists actually showed some of the, uh, some of the. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, the radar, and it's like they're in massive clouds. You can actually they show up on radar. They show up as massive clouds of something moving over Vegas. They need to. They need That's the, creepy. They need the seagulls, like Salt Lake City needed the seagulls. That's what I was thinking. Hmm. Then they would have a new state bird. All they need to do is put a landfill in Vegas. And your problem is solved, folks. There's seagulls everywhere. Why don't you ask me for these things? I can help you. Well, apparently we hate everyone in Congress. Why is that? Well, it's pretty sad. Um, it's uh, one of the new polls that they did for all of the Utah elected representatives. Uh, it's utahpolicy.com. They're actually very good. Um, really, really good numbers. They're always very careful about their methodology. But right. they asked, you know, do you approve or disapprove of your elected official? They also throw in, I don't know. I don't know is crucial because for people who really don't know most of the time you'll go yeah sure whatever i don't know yeah, yeah, i hate yeah, them yeah, yeah. just because you want to be able to say something right so at least it gives a more accurate analysis of who really likes you need who. to know who they are right nobody likes mitt romney no 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 senator mitt romney uh he's a freshman senator he has the highest disapproval rating at 40 percent what 40 percent just can't stand him 37 percent approved and the rest were like uh whatever it's interesting lavar webb who's the the publisher says voters are just disgusted in general with washington dc and is carrying over here in utah he says number one the republicans expressed repeatedly that they hate the level of incivility and right, ugliness right. in the republican side of the of the right. chambers and the democrats here are pissed off at the democratic representatives who said none of you are doing anything you're right. not making anything better right. so, so politics just sucks basically. either direction uh Rep- republican john curtis was the only one who came off even slightly what, what better did he have? what was his number? he had a 31 percent approval rating which sucks but most of them, it was just because people didn't know who he was. 31. Representative Chris Stewart, lowest approval rating among those surveyed. Only 26% approve of how he's handling his job. 33% disapprove. Um, Senator Mike Lee, he got at least second place. He had 39% approval rate. Interestingly, um, Ben McAdams, Representative Ben McAdams, yeah. had the highest approval rating. Which was? At 50%. Oh, interesting. So... Imagine, That's imagine, humbling. imagine if at your your work you had a thirty one percent approval rating, you would be on you'd be unemployed at thirty one percent anyway. Wow, um, there's a level of irony there, isn't there? There is something so sad, and I thought this was really interesting. Nineteen seventy one, uh, Apollo eleven, uh, they went up and they went uh, to the moon and stuff, and they brought with them a bunch of different stuff for study, and one of the things were tree seeds seeds from from different kinds of trees and they went around the moon 10 times and then they came back and they gave these seeds to certain people after they sprouted them 
Now, weren't these like some, like some state parks, and then there was like a national park, and I think a couple of like almost every state, almost every stuff? state, yeah. almost every state got one, and they were all different kinds depending on that state and what would grow there. They don't know where they are now. After all that work, how does the tree? Those move? poor little trees how circled the moon. How do you lose track of a moon tree? You would it's think like, it would be special. Wait, where where'd it go? So anyway, so so basically, um, everyone's kind of going, oh, and they go, oh, they probably died, they probably got cut down, they probably development, one, one got run, taken out uh, because it was near uh, an area that they put a mall in. Oh, well, God forbid we let the moon tree stay. But! When there's another Forever 21 that has to be built. Other states like Arkansas, Florida, and Georgia have kept up the moon trees and monuments and periodically organize events around them. That's very cool. I remember reading about that in one of my history classes, that this was like a huge deal, because they're like, maybe the space radiation will do nice. something different or cool, but there'll be amazing moon trees. And I know that, I mean, in the middle of the Utah State Capitol, they still have the glass-enclosed boxes with the moon rocks in them and how special that is. Right, 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 right. I remember seeing that like on a tour when I was in school. But now it's like, yeah, we don't know where those are. That makes me sad. Speaking about the moon. Ohio State, 50th anniversary of going to the moon and landing on it for the very first time, decided they were going to do something a little special at the state fair. Mm -hmm. And so you know how here we have the, the big uh, butter bowl that they make? Mm -hmm. And they carve the butter the, sculptures. Yeah. Right. But no, they did it differently. The life-size sculpture, and this is of Neil Armstrong. He's a native in this town. Uh, and the other astronauts holding the flag with the with the limb behind them, no way. All made of butter. They did the moon landing in butter. <laughs> that is so awesome. How many cows oh. had to give their udders for that? But I they, mean, just they weren't harmed. Out. They just gave no, their. No, but that's just a lot of freaking butter. It is. You know, I. Did I they was... put it like in a glass enclosed case or something? They so they keep it cool. Yeah, yeah they refrigerate you have it. To, right? And you carve it while you're in there. But the only thing is, the first thing I thought is, why not cheese? The moon, oh, made, of, made of green cheese. That was the old wives' tale. That would be cool. But anyway, so... Why so, did they pick green cheese, by the way? Because the moon has never looked green under any circumstances. I never heard green. I just heard cheese. Oh, no, the moon is made of green cheese. Am I right? I'm not Can sure. You, write it down. If you make a comment, if you would, but wasn't it always green cheese? That's what I thought, anyway. All right, can you tell me something good? I love this so much. This is this is something, tell me something entertaining, but it's one of my favorite stories ever. I don't know if you've ever met an Israeli paratrooper, um, but men and women serve equally in their armies over in Israel. Everyone does. And um, we have... And it's, it's it's just amazing because the women there are you don't screw with them. For instance, the actress who plays Wonder Woman, she was an Israeli paratrooper, and mm -hmm. she's one of the tallest, most beautiful, toughest creatures alive. Well, Aya Polanski is also a former Israeli paratrooper, mm -hmm. and she uh, lives in Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts. Now she's going to school there. Oh, nice. She's got two kids, mm -hmm. and she was running uh, down by the river, and um, some guy ran by, and he's a little creep who's a professional flasher, so he knows how to yank down his shorts and. A, for a secluded so area and flash. So they're going like by each other. Mm -hmm. And flash, and then he can pull his shorts up real fast and run by because he's a little weasel. Well, she went, no, wait. And she turned around and she starts chasing him. Now, the Massachusetts State Police actually re released some surveillance video that was oh, yeah. showing that part of the river. And you can see him running his butt down. And he's like starting to like go away from her. And you can tell she's grabbing his arm and she's trying to call because she wants to call police. Right. Um, but I should take a hand off. Him. Yeah, so he ra he broke off and ran away. He said, "I know he's flashing himself to me. The next girl he's going to grab, maybe the third girl he's going to attack." She said, "And if I'm if he, he's going to do this to me, I'm not going to let him get away with it, because um, he was forcing himself into my reality." Oh yeah, which I thought was interesting. So um, they are looking for him now. They've got a pretty good image. But they said, she said, "Climb out of the bed in your mother's home and go to court on your action. Take responsibility for what you did." I just love the vision of her just chasing him down, though. And it's like, it's this is everything over, they're terrified looking of. Looking over his shoulder, and here she comes like a freight train. Yeah, these little creeps, that's everything they're afraid of. But it's just the funniest video, just because he's cowering. It was awesome. All right, so thanks for joining us today. Oh, we're the... not done. One more. What? What do you have? This is pretty cool. Um, it's uh, Kevin. He's here in Utah. 
he lost his arm, and it mm -hmm. was unfortunately his dominant one, and so he spent a long time in his accidents trying to get oh, better. Oh, change your... Oh, can it's you really, imagine how hard? It's really rough. Well, he, he went into some clinical trials, and he had to go through a lot of stuff to get into it, but it's the Luke Bionic Arm. It's from Luke Skywalker and um, Empire Strikes Back. Shut up. And they created a robotic arm. Now, here's what makes this so amazing. University of Utah engineers are working on this. Right. Um, what they're trying to do is the basic idea, they say, is to recreate the human hand so the user can move it in sort of a dexterous and well-controlled but intuitive fashion. Well, they usually the, do that with controls and stuff, The don't goal they? they're working with is, is that it can be operated by thought. Now, this would give them more ability to do more delicate tasks like picking up a grape, for instance. Yeah. Or, and he said, the first thing I remember is we ran a digital test. I put the hand onto it, and I ran my hand down a corrugated wall, and he said, for the first time, I could feel the bumps. You can feel the bumps? It gives you feedback? They wiretap into the nerves and they capture the signals coming down from the nerves to the brain. So the goal is if they can translate those correctly. Both ways. Both ways. Yeah, if they can translate them oh correctly, my gosh. you can operate the hand by, arm by thought. Do you know how many people I'd be flipping off? <laughs> how is it I can come up with a scientific advancement that is like beyond miraculous and that is your first I'm sorry, thought. it's my brain. I can't stop myself. No, that's great. Where was this done? University of Utah. They're running. You guys. The, they're running the clinical trials now. So many smart people here. You really, flipping it off is like the first thing you came with. That was like your first goal. The boss comes in, says something that if hurts you want the me a little. Full recipe for the zucchini dish today. Just go to the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream .com. Everything's all laid out there for you, and we'll be having the week of zucchinis. They're, they're really simple. We and, can't make them go away. And so far, I've gotten rid of like uh, I've been making these for a little bit. I've well, we keep making stuff, and then you come in with more. The garden. I must continue. <laughs> See, your mailboxes and your cars are not safe. We yeah. still might be putting Lock some your down. houses and your windows. All right, you guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> On the Todd and Aaron Daily Street. You still won't eat a but zucchini. Thought, but no. Not if it's not disguised as something else. A muffin with sugar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. See you tomorrow.